Now consider the next mapping technique which is a set associative mapping. So the next mapping technique is called as set associative set associative mapping set associative mapping and this set associative mapping is a combination of both direct mapping plus associative mapping plus associative mapping okay and here uh, right now we are studying two way set associative mapping two way set associative mapping two way set associative mapping okay so consider here assuming this is the cpu this is the cache memory and this is the main memory as you already know that the main memory is divided into blocks so these are representing blocks and the cache memory is divided into lines so these are representing cache lines and we are having some numbers as uh, let us assume that the size of the main memory is of uh, 128 words and the size of cache memory is 64 words and let us assume that the line size or you can say the block size is equal to 4 words for simplicity okay see the line size and block size are the, are the same that you already know now here in this particular case how many blocks will be there in the main memory number of blocks in the main memory that will be 128 words divided by 4 words which can also be done as 2 raised to power 7 divided by 2 raised to power 2 or you can say 2 raised to power 5 blocks which is equal to 32 blocks okay so that is this is block number 0 block number 1 block number 2 block number 3 block number 4 5 6 7 up to so on block number 31 so there are total 32 blocks and to represent the address of every block we require 5 bits so hence it is 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 this is block number 2 0 0 1 0 block number 3 0 0 1 1 block number 4 0 0 1 0 0 block number 5 0 0 1 0 1 block number 6 0 0 1 1 0 block number 7 0 0 1 1 1 up to so on block number 31 which is 1 1 1 1 1 so these are total 30, 32 memory blocks now here the cache memory is divided into lines so here the number of cache lines number of cache lines will be equal to 64 words divided by 4 words which is equal to total 16 cache lines right so 16 lines so this is line number 0 line number 1 line number 2 line number 3 line number 4 5 up to so on 15 so in total we have 16 cache lines and to represent 16 cache lines we require 4 bits so there are 4 bit line address so hence this is representing line number 0 so which is 0 0 0 0 this is 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 up to so on 1 1 1 1 so total we have 4 bit addresses for the cache lines right now when I'm saying two way set associative two way set associative means these cache lines will now be divided into sets and the set every set will be containing two lines so here if we find out what is the number of sets number of sets that will be equal to number of cache lines divided by the set size so here total uh, the number of cache lines are 16 and set size are 2 hence there will be 8 uh, sets there will be 8 sets and every set is containing 2 lines so this is assuming that this is representing the set number 1 from here to here this is set number 1 or can make it set number 0 and this is this one is representing set number 1 
next this one is representing some set number 2 up to so on this is representing set number 7 so there are total 8 set so to represent the set address we require total 3 bits because there are total 8 sets so with the help of 3 bits we will be able to make uh, total 8 combinations so this is the set 0 the address of set 0 is 0 0 0 this is set 1 it is 0 0 1 this is set 2 it is 0 1 0 up to so on this is set 7 which is 1 1 1 1 now we are putting here see when we straight the direct mapping then we have seen that we are putting a restriction on every block that that can only be placed on a certain line and uh, within that line th that block can be placed so that is a very restricted manner but when we did associative mapping now in case of associative mapping we have we, saw, we said that any cache line can contain any block right so obviously there is no restrictions in that manner but the only problem is in case of uh, associative mapping we are going to have more searching time so it is going to take more time to search a certain block in the line because we have to search the entire cache line but in case of direct mapping the searching time is very less or it is kind of negligible but the problem is we are putting lot more restrictions over there so in case of set associative mapping when we made the set associative mapping to be a combination of both direct mapping and associative mapping in that case we ensured that we'll be having the freedom of associative mapping and we'll be having the convenience of direct mapping now here in the set inside a set we'll we are, we'll be obviously we are going to put a restriction that a certain block can only be placed in a certain set but within the set for example here within this set there are two lines within this set the block can take any line any line so we are giving some freedom as well as we are putting some restrictions the restrictions are li like this that a certain block can only be placed in a certain set but within that set it can be placed in any line right and which block can be placed in which set so that is dependent on the last three bits here last three bits for example the last three bits are 0 0 0 then this block can be placed in set number 0 0 0 in the same way if the last three bits are 0 0 1 now this block can only be placed in the set number 1 in the same way if let us suppose the last three bits are 1 1 1 now this block can only be placed in the set number 7 again after this the next block address will be 0 1 0 0 0 because the last three bits are 0 therefore this can only be placed in the set number 1 but within the set this block can be placed anywhere okay so the uh, if you CPU is generating a memory request CPU is telling that I want that certain number of or I want that certain particular uh, you can say block then it will be generating a uh, address right uh, a certain word from the memory not exactly the block I, I should say a certain word from the memory so it, it will generate a word address and that word address will be depending on uh, the main memory uh, what is the number of bits required to represent the addresses in the main memory or can say what is the number of bits required to represent word address in the main memory so here because the main memory size is 128 28 words so we are going to require 7 bits to represent the addresses right so the entire address here will be of 7 bit now this 7 bits will be divided into 3 parts number 1 is the offset part and this offset part is dependent on what is the size of the block so here block size of 4 words so it can be written as 2 raised to power 2 words hence to represent every word we require 2 bit right so this offset will be of 2 bit now the next bits are used these next bits are used to represent set and the last bits are used as a tag bit so here how many bits are used to represent set these are 3 bits so here 3 bits will be used to represent sets now how many bits are remaining there are 7 plus uh, 3 plus 2 is 5 that means we used 5 bits from here to here and only 2 bits are remaining so these 2 bits will be acting as a tag so for every every uh, line here for example here with every line will be having tag bits so these are representing the tag bits and these tag bits they will be of 2 bits here for this particular example 
okay because uh, out of this seven bits we are using three bits for set number two bits for offset so remaining bits are two bits which are acting as a tag bit and which will tell that a particular line is containing which particular block so for example if i'm saying for this particular line here the tag is containing one one so these are two bits as one one that means if it is one one now the line number is zero zero so you are going to put line number here zero 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 right so that means the entire address is now representing this is 2 raised to power uh, this is 16 plus 8 so this is representing this line is containing the block number which is 24 okay so this is the block number 24 hence here block number 24 is present now what if in this case here we have the tag bit as uh, 1 0 so because the tag bit is 1 0 and this is uh, the set number is 0 1 0 now here this is representing that we are having 16 plus and this is representing 2 so that means the block number 18 is present here block number 18 is present here okay so this is how the set associative mapping is implemented and to represent the tag weights you already we have already seen how we can use the multiplexer and the xnor gate or and gate how we can use a combination of those gates to implement this uh, searching in the cache memory okay so let us do one thing let us take few examples of the set associative mapping and let us see how we can use those examples uh, or, or you can say we'll do one thing we'll take a single example and we are going to uh, use that particular example to differentiate between direct mapping associative mapping set associative mapping where in the case of set associative mapping we are going to say what is a two-way set associative three-way set associative and four-way set associative but quickly just understand that when i'm saying two-way set associative that means the set size is of two when i'm saying four-way set associative that means the set size is of four okay so here there are uh, this is a two-way set associative mapping 